We've got more people wanting to come to our Caris Bible College than what we can accommodate. So we have begun a massive building program. Our first step is to build six dorms. We're trying to get two of those dorms finished before the start of the 24-25 school year in September. And uh, man, we are just working as fast as we can and we need people to help us. Not only do we need these six dorms, we've actually got the foundation in for six dorms, two of them we're trying to complete before the beginning of the school year, but we also need an activity center where we can feed them, where we can have additional classroom and office space, and then we are gonna have an athletic center, a hotel and conference center, a performing arts center. We're gonna have everything that a typical university would have, and I believe that that is where God is leading me. But in order to do this, I need people to stand with me. The Lord has told me not to take out a loan that my partners are my bank. And so I'm going to you, people that have watched this program. And if you've been blessed by this program, if you recognize that this is the truth and it's setting people free, and if you wanna help us set more people free so they can get engaged in this cultural war that we're in today, then I'd like to ask you to go to awmi.net slash campus and we have an artist rendering there of our campus. There's also a number of uh, live streams that we've done. We've got endorsements by Bill Johnson, Kenneth Copeland, Governor Huckabee, James Robison, Joni Lamb. Many different people have endorsed this project and I believe it would really be a blessing to you. So check it out at awmi.net slash campus and there's a place there where you can join with us and become a partner in building out the Karis Bible College campus. Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. We believe in the gospel message that Mr. Womack preaches, and we believe in his ministry. And furthermore, we believe in the, the level of integrity that they operate with financially. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a teaching that I just started yesterday talking about Christian philosophy. I have a book on this that I wrote 20 or 30 years ago, and the first part of this book is kind of theological, talking about the very things I talked about yesterday and we'll be talking about today. But then the second half of this book goes into how we should look at things in our culture today. And it's kind of a reference deal. I actually have pictures in here, color pictures that illustrate the things I'm talking about. And I deal with creation, I deal with abortion, and I deal with homosexuality. And I have charts and graphs, pictures and things. We are asking for a donation of some amount for this. This is a uh, 280 page book. But then we have this little uh, booklet that we're calling Observing All Things. And this has some of the same material in the second part, some of the same pictures, some of the same graphs and things. And this is a freebie offer to you. This is just a small portion of what this book covers. But then we have CDs, DVDs, a study guide and other things. And we'll give out information about this at the end of the program. Yesterday I was using Colossians chapter two Verse 8, where it says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And basically what I was doing was just saying that uh, Paul here was warning us to be on guard. That's what the word beware means. It comes from be at war. And we need to be on guard against the enemy lest he spoil us. This isn't talking about spoil like fruit spoils. This is talking about don't let them strip you of what Jesus has provided. And I spent all yesterday basically introducing this subject and saying that the reason that the church is in the situation it's in today and the reason that we are impotent and not making a greater impact on our society today is because we haven't been on guard. We have let Satan spoil us and the average Christian is limping through life, not accepting and enjoying the fullness of what Jesus has provided. And because of it, we aren't an attractive witness for the Lord. Who wants to be 
like the average Christian today who's just as sick, just as poor, just as scared, just as miserable, and most of the time not near as happy as the unbelievers. There is pleasure in sin for a season, and, and the average Christian isn't even enjoying that. They aren't enjoying the things of the Lord, and they aren't enjoying the pleasures of sin. And so because of it, we aren't being the salt and the light that God intended us to be. So that's what I covered yesterday. Today I want to talk about this word philosophy. And the word literally is talking about a way of thinking. Most people don't use this word philosophy today. Those who even think about these kind of things, they might use the term worldview. You know, I wrote this book 25 years ago or something like that, and I put these three areas that I dealt with, creation versus evolution, and abortion and homosexuality like 25 years ago, but it's just a kind of a minor uh, explanation of those things. Now I have what we call a biblical worldview series, and I have a biblical worldview foundation series that is 12 hours of teaching just by me on different subjects. One of those is creation versus evolution. And then uh, we have a biblical worldview on nothing but sexuality, and I have a bunch of my friends, E.W. Jackson, Dwayne Sheriff, just a lot of different people that contributed towards this. And we have, I think it's about 15 hours worth of teaching on what the Bible has to say about what, what godly morality and sexuality is life. And then we have one on racism, we have one on uh, Marxism or socialism, and these are just exposés in depth by multiple people dealing with these things. You go to our website and you could get information on that. But anyway, my point in saying all of that is now I've developed this in much more detail. But this was a teaching from 25 or 30 years ago that basically dealt with the same principles, just not in the same depth. And what this is talking about is that philosophy is a way of thinking not individual thoughts, but it's a paradigm. It's a world view. It's a lens that we look at the world through, and everything that comes at us, we evaluate it through that lens. Now, most people don't really recognize that you have a philosophy. You probably haven't used that word, but you do. You know, I remember going over to Poland, and this was before the Berlin Wall came down. This was in the early 1980s, and they were still under com communism. And I remember going over there, and everywhere I went, I mean, people just would immediately say, an American. Uh, I went into places that people outside of the Soviet Union didn't go to. It was remote. And uh, anyway, I just stood out. I had a, uh, sometimes I would wear a cowboy hat, <laughs> which was, totally out of place. I had a big old belt buckle, and I wore my boots and stuff, and it was obvious. But anyway, I wanted to blend in, so I went and borrowed clothes from the guy who was my interpreter, and I put on totally his clothes. And as far as I could tell, I, w I looked exactly like them. I was wearing their shoes, their, his clothes, everything. And I went out and stood on a street corner and within five minutes, I had a crowd around me going, American, American. And I never said a word. I knew if I started talking, everybody would know that I was an American. And anyway, I asked this Polish guy that I was with, I said, how do these people recognize that I'm American? He says, it's your attitude. He didn't use the word philosophy, but he says, it's your attitude. And I said, how, do, how does my attitude come across when I don't even say a word? He says, you're free. He says, people, this was under the Soviet Union in the early 1980s. He says, we've learned that you never look at a person eye to eye. You know, the Bible says that the eye is the uh, window of the soul. And people that were under communism, they didn't look people to eye to eye because it could be a KGB agent. It could be somebody who's trying to check them out. So you always glance down. You always look down. You had a body language that, in a sense, showed your submission. You never walked with your head up. You didn't look at people eye to eye. You didn't smile at anybody. And you certainly didn't act happy. And, you know, once he began to start telling me these things, I started looking. And sure enough, there was a body language that people had been 
taught to be subjected and to be beat down and things. And, and I was just standing there smiling at people as they came by, and I was looking at people eye to eye. And I was standing there, and I, I just looked free. Did you know you have an attitude whether you know it or not? And I realized when I was over there that people that we consider homeless today and that we would consider that they're in bad situation, you take them and put them in some of those communist countries, and again, you know, the Soviet Union now doesn't exist, but if you put them back into a situation like that where just for the wrong look, the wrong statement, you could be put in prison, you could be sent to Siberia or something like that, you took an average homeless person in the U.S. and put them over there, they would be, they would be considered free and uh, liberated compared to the average person that was under that. It was a philosophy, and it affected the way they walked, the way they talked, the way they interacted with people, did everything. I'm saying all this to say that you may not recognize it, but you have a philosophy. You have a way of looking at things. You know, being an optimist is a philosophy. Being a pessimist is a philosophy. And there may be people saying, well, I'm a pessimist because of all these negative things that happen. I'm not sitting there saying that there aren't negative things that happen, and I'm not saying that people don't have bad attitudes and stuff, and there's reasons why that happens. But nonetheless, once you get an offense, and once you've been hurt, and once you've been abused, unless you receive the freedom that's in Christ, it will cause you to have a philosophy where you just don't trust anybody where you expect things to always be bad. You just become a pessimist. I actually had a woman who worked for me one time who was married to a man, and he just physically, sexually, every way, abused her verbally in every way. And because of it, she got a divorce, but she had a chip on her shoulder, and she hated men. And I mean, if she came in and if you said, well, you look nice today, she would sue you for sexual harassment. And we actually had her sue some of our employees who didn't do a thing wrong, but she just had a paradigm, a way of looking at things, a philosophy that she had been hurt and she thought that every male was out to hurt her and she couldn't get along with anybody. And I could just keep giving examples and example, example of this. You know, we have the saying that hurt people hurt people. And if you have been hurt, and if you haven't let Jesus rid you of that and change you of that, you will wind up having a philosophy and you wind up uh, becoming the person that you hate. There's so many people that, you know, go through an abusive marriage and then they go and get remarried and they go pick a person that's just like the one who abused them. It's a philosophy. It's a way of thinking. And there are people that are trapped in these terrible situations and they're praying and asking God to change it and they're looking for something from the outside to change. But change doesn't come from the outside. Change comes from the inside. You have to be set free on the inside. And this is what so many people are missing. What Paul is saying right here is just so important for us today that we need to be on guard because Satan is trying to spoil us, strip us of what Jesus has done, and the way he does it is through philosophy. Philosophy is not just individual thoughts. It's a way of thinking. It's a paradigm. It's connecting all of the dots. You know, there's a lot of Christians that have heard the Scripture, 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes we were healed. Isaiah 53 where it says, by his stripes we are healed. And they, they know these scriptures, and they can quote it. And so because of that, they may desire healing, but they still think sick. They have a philosophy of sickness. I've prayed with a lot of people who've been sick for so long, they just think sick. And did you know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, Proverbs 23, 7. And so if, you're, if your whole life, if you've been sick a long period of time, did you know you get to where you dream sick, you think sick, you plan sick? When you go on a vacation, you take all of your medication, you think about, am I going to be in a place where I can get my prescriptions refilled? Am I going to be in a place where there's allergies? Am I going to be in a place where if something happens, I'll be, have access to emergency medical treatment and stuff? 
And I know some of you may be shocked that I'm saying this, but if you just see sickness as your identity and that's the way you think and your whole life revolves around it, you're going to stay sick. You've got to see yourself well before you see yourself well. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Mark chapter 11, verse 24 says, Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And yet, see, there's a lot of people that have an individual truth that by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. And so they pray, but they don't ever see themselves well. They didn't see that they received it. And so they continue to act sick. They continue to act poor. They continue to go around with the hurt and the pain that they've experienced. They never change their philosophy, their way of thinking, and yet they want to experience different results. I think it was Einstein that said it's a definition of insanity to do the same thing and expect different results. I could tweak that a little bit and say it this way. It's a definition of insanity to continue to think the same way and expect different results. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. So you've got to change your philosophy and this is how Satan gains access to us is through a wrong philosophy, a wrong way of thinking, a wrong paradigm, a wrong worldview, a wrong way of looking at things. This is how he gains access to us. He cannot do anything to you without your consent and cooperation. And I know that that statement is offensive to a lot of people, but if you understand it correctly, it's actually a wonderful statement. It's wonderful because if Satan is limited, that somehow or another he has to gain access to us through the way we think, well, then that means that if we would keep our mind stayed upon the Lord, Isaiah 26, 3, the Lord would keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. That means that if we just bring every thought into captivity and under obedience to Christ, the way it talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, then Satan would have no access to us. For those who've got problems in their life and they don't want to accept responsibility and they are, they are glorying in the fact that they are being, uh, you know, controlled and they are sitting there and just, they're, they're taking comfort in the fact that it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Other people have made me the way I am. It's my dysfunctional family. It's the fact that this person did this to me. It's the color of my skin. It's a lack of my education. It's my gender. And we have all of these reasons for being uh, taken advantage of, and we use them as excuses. People like that are going to be very offended by what I'm saying because I'm saying that nothing from without makes you the way you are unless you accept that philosophy, that way of thinking. If you were to take the philosophy, the way of thinking that the Bible produces, you could be a winner in every single situation. And there's people that'll take offense at that well, because they are glorying in the fact that it's not my fault. They don't want to take any responsibility. They're saying, you're condemning me. I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the Word of God. Jesus said that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And it's only the truth you know that makes you free. You are always going to be a victim and not a victor if you think that you have no control and it's your color of your skin, it's your lack of education, it's your gender, it's your, you know, all of these different things. You're always going to be a victim until you start recognizing that nothing from without can destroy me. I've got a choice whether I become bitter or better. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you get your philosophy, your way of thinking correct, you can break any chain. You can break anything that Satan has put upon your life. Amen. So again, people who are glorying in the fact that I'm a victim you will be offended by this because it's taking away your defenses. It's putting responsibility on you. 
I'm not to say that you don't have problems that were maybe pushed upon you. There are prejudices against people over their sex, over their color, over all kinds of things, but there are so many examples of people that have overcome all of those prejudices and have been able to succeed. I'm not saying that there aren't prejudice, that there aren't factors without, that there aren't pressures that come against you, but I'm saying nothing can make you live as a victim unless you accept that mindset. If you get the proper philosophy, the proper way of thinking, you can break out of anything. There is no restrictions that can hold you back. And again, there's people offended by that, but it's meant to encourage you. There's some people watching this that I guarantee you the truth is setting you free. You've just felt like, what's the use? I can't help it. This is who I am. I was sexually abused when I was a kid, and so I'm just going to limp through life. No, that's not so. You can be totally set free from that. You know, I was just meditating today where it says in Isaiah chapter 54 that you will forget the shame of your widowhood and you won't remember it anymore. You can literally be delivered of anything that has come against you. You can be set free. Now, this puts some responsibility on you, but it's really not your responsibility. It's your response to His ability if you would respond positively, if you would take the Word of God, if you would renew your mind and establish a Christian philosophy, a Christian way of looking at things that have come against you, then I promise you, as a man thinks in his heart, that's the way it'll be. You can literally get set free. Your life is going the direction of your dominant thought. And I know that, again, this is offensive to so many people because your life is a total mess. Maybe your marriage is a wreck, your finances are a wreck, your health is a wreck, and you're thinking, no, it's not my fault. I didn't have anything to do with this. Well, again, I'm not saying that you go out and pursue a broken marriage and you don't pursue uh, poverty and you don't pursue sickness. It's not like you're saying, I want these things, but your thinking has been wrong. You haven't understood what Jesus has made available to you and how that you can overcome all things, how that He always makes us triumph in Christ Jesus. You haven't thought that way and because you have seen yourself as just a mere human being and you don't have any power against sickness, against poverty, against these things. See, that's not true. I'm not only human. One third of me is wall to wall Holy Ghost. If I'm born again, if you're born again, then you have God living on the inside of you. And if you were to change your philosophy, your way of thinking, you could literally break whatever has come against you. And I'm not saying that we don't have problems that come from the outside, but I'm saying they couldn't get on the inside of you unless they pass your thinking. If you were to see that, no, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed, Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, He has turned off sickness, taken sickness away from the midst of me, and that I am not going to get sick. If you had that kind of thinking, that then Satan's sickness couldn't penetrate past your thinking and get into your body. I'm saying some radical things, and I know that people think I'm weird, but I think you're weird to have all of these benefits that God has provided for us, and yet we are living so substandard. It says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, that Jesus gave Himself for our sins to deliver us from this present evil world, not just the one to come, but we are supposed to have victory now. Jesus even said to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven there isn't sickness, there isn't poverty, there isn't sorrow, there isn't grief. You can live a victorious life, but it's going to have to start with you changing the way you think. If you think that all you are is saved and stuck and you just have to muddle through down here and it's when we all get to heaven that what a day that's going to be. In the sweet by and by, it's going to be awesome. Well, you can also have steak on the plate while you wait. Amen. You don't have to wait until just a sweet by and by. If you would renew your mind and get a Christian philosophy, you could start walking in victory today. Again, I'm not saying that you'll never have a problem, but I'm saying you can overcome those problems. Those problems can't get on the inside of you and dominate you unless you allow it through your stinking thinking, a bad philosophy. 
Andrew is offering his booklet, Observing All Things, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household. This offer is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Christian Philosophy, is available as a book and study guide. This series is also available as a nine disc CD album, TV DVD album, and USB made from our daily television broadcast aired in 2012. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $135. Go to our website at awmc.ca to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. I want to make you aware that we have what we call our Heritage Giving Community, and this is for people who want to give an end-of-life gift to the ministry. You know, many of you have just been giving and giving, and one of the ways to give is in your will to put the ministry in there and take your assets at the end of your life and use it to promote the gospel. And so we now have this Heritage Giving Community that we have put together. And if you're interested in doing something like that, I'd encourage you to contact us. We'll have all the information on the screen. And this is just a way of you taking the blessing that God has given you and putting it to work even after it's time for you to go and be with the Lord. You'll be blessed. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? Follow Andrew on social media today. I want to let all of you know who are watching our program in Canada that we have a Canadian office. We also have a website, awmc.ca, and you can go there and you can get all of our materials sent to you from our Canadian office. You can become a partner with us and give and the money will stay right there to help us reach people in Canada. We would love to help you and minister to you any way we can. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. You can listen to them while you're online or download them for later and listen on the go. The free materials offered by this ministry are made possible by the generous support of our friends and partners. If Andrew's teachings are making a difference in your life, consider becoming a grace partner with Andrew Womack Ministries Canada today. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to hearing from you today.